The Game Industry's Unforgivable Problem. Well, today's story. This is by Belly Lure News. We had quite the last minute update. Right. Creditation. So I've got a question for you. Who made The Last of Us? I mean, obviously, it's Naughty Dog and Sony. But yeah. if you were to watch the trailer, it would say acclaimed video game with one creator, Neil Druckmann. That's a bit of a problem because Neil it's Druckmann weird. is not the sole creator of The Last of Us. Actually, there were two co-directors. Neil is one of them. And uh, Bruce Stanley is, bizarrely enough, absolutely nowhere to be seen. So amidst all the chaos that we're going to get into in today's uh, story, we have had the co-director of The Last of Us call for unionization after not getting into the credits for The Last of Us. What, are yeah, they just that's... washing over his name and having it only be Neil Druckmann? That's... What the hell's going on there? Like, that's pretty damn bizarre. He said, yeah. it's an argument for unionization that someone who is part of the co-creation of that world and those characters isn't getting a credit or a nickel for the work they put into it. Maybe we need unions in the game industry to be able to protect creators. And I suppose he's a pretty high profile dude. So yeah. if the co-director of The Last of Us gets left off the credits, what who hope else? do a bunch of regular workers in this industry have? Well, to answer that question, I'm going to hand it off to Matt. Do you know who makes your video games? Chances are you're going to have the idea of either Most people a publisher no. or maybe a studio. Very yeah. rarely will you, unless you it's something like a Kojima game, you're not likely not going to think of the people involved. You will maybe be able to think of some developers off the top of your head. That's with anything, though. Whether it's a movie, um, I guess it's like the only genre that makes sense. I guess movies, music... Uh, any media that actually takes more than one person. Maybe some popular ones, especially from back in the day. But that's one thing that we kind of miss a lot of the time. Even streamers, think... to a degree, to be fair. Like YouTube content creators, you don't really know their editors and stuff like that, or rarely Especially do. as we get into bigger and bigger and bigger video games and larger productions. You lose sight of the people, unless they're specifically charismatic leaders or something. You kind of lose them. Back in, I guess, in the shorter history of video games, people could be called rock stars of video games back in the day. You're thinking of people like, you know, John Carmack, John Romero, Ken Roberta Williams, those kind of people who are, you know, codified as the people who made these games. It was it was an ex-person game. Or if you watch the uh, H-Bomber guy video and the Tommy Tallarico kind of stuff where it's, oh, that's a big name attached. You still get it today. And these were like Mike Bethel and uh, Lucas Pope being uh, attached. But generally speaking, people... I think that's only the case for like really hardcore gaming enthusiasts. I think most people... I have no idea. Like, I have no idea any of those names. I don't care, to be perfectly honest. I just don't. It doesn't bother me. People lose sight that actual humans who make video games, and it's the creative ability of those humans that actually make it what it is. It's not all production pipelines. Production pipelines can help, but it's mostly it's creator-driven work. As we've often talked about with the discussions of crunch and stuff, it's a lot better for happier, healthier people to work on video games because a lot of the time you get better work, right? The future of video games is in people who are... It's not just video games, that's anything. ...really damn good at stuff. They're really experienced, they've learned for years, they know what they're doing, they've been through like rounds and rounds and rounds in the ring with development. On the other side, they can make absolutely banger games. And I have an incredible example for you later on, but I'll have to get through a few more things first. People are like dealing with the difficulty that massive game development are taking away like names and careers. People aren't been credited enough. And this isn't just a, oh yeah, you forget the individuals. It's literally, you finish a game and not everyone who worked in that game will be in the credits. It's a long running issue and it's hard to maybe understand exactly. See, I didn't know that. Like, that's kind of, that's crap. To be fair, no one really watches the credits unless you're like, like I said, like a crazy game enthusiast. Uh, but it should be there because that's not right. Like, you were part of the development of it. You should be in there. Unless you like, did a thing for a day. Like you got a developer a sandwich or something like that. Um, or, you know, you bought food for everyone. Like, I don't think you should be in the credits. But if you worked on the game, you created models, you, you know, did coding of any kind, you should be in there. Exactly how it's uh, impacting you specifically. But in the next five years, in the next 10 years, in the next 15 years of video games, it's going to become a pretty serious problem. We can go back to the first Easter egg in 1980. And it was in a game called Adventure. 
where you did a bunch of complex stuff and you go into a room and it would spell out created by Warren Robinette. And that's because there was no credits in the game. So Robinette made this room, made this Easter egg just to show my name is in that game. If I'm going to make another game or I'm going to show someone made a game, the only way I can prove it is by saying here. This is literally my name in the video game. And the same thing happened in 2017. Forbes interviewed uh, Atari's new owners, Warner Communication, and they just didn't credit. And you see a couple of, there's a couple of articles crop up every like couple of years nearly, just saying publishers are supposed to put in credits, management are supposed to put in credits, and a lot of times they just don't. And sometimes they have things saying, oh, well, if you leave during development, you don't get a credit. If you're not here on the day we put them together, they're not done. Often the rules for who goes in credits aren't defined. So it is literally just- yeah, that's really just oh like you weren't there during roll call people forgot your name or you, you were busy that day and you weren't around stuff like that or even contractors even back with rockstar in 2007 the a producer for manhunt 2 published a list of 55 names that have been left out and then 130 people were left out of the credits for la noir and that's a lot of people same with when okami yeah. was released for the wii capcom didn't credit the original development team and obviously that's a good dev team clover who made okami that's a deck okami that is a big names and they just didn't bother to put them there and the weird thing about this is the industry kind of knows that you love names and they like to sell you games based on people's names you will sometimes like it's, it's a few names that can do it like a handful we'll see kojima plastered over everything neil Druckmann being highlighted as a creator of last of us um i don't think the last of us creators names hold much weight i'm not saying they're great good games or anything like that but it's not enough you know what I mean? It's only been like one or two games. Like when you've released banger after banger for like a decade, then your name actually starts mattering. Obviously had a very important role in those games and in the TV show now, but fundamentally the game was created by everyone. You look at Amy Hennig, Shigeru Miyamoto, everyone knows that name. I mean like Final Fantasy 16. That would be an exciting enough event, but the fact that it's Yoshi P on it, makes everyone even happier because they know that name means quality i think the most striking example here i want to talk because obviously you can yeah. go on for but that's also a case of only if you're into mmos would you know about yoshi p and specifically final fantasy years but vince some because outside of it i don't think he's done much work i mean obviously i know he has but like he hasn't really been credited for like really a lot of good work. Pella is the fun one to think about, right? Imagine a universe, because obviously Vince Pella recently has been just tasked with saving EA. He showed up with Respawn to EA and went, right, here's the best games you're ever going to make under the EA label. I will now go and save Battlefield. I will now go and save your entire process alongside with Laura Mill. They're just saving everything. So imagine a world where Vince Ampella was left out of credits because he didn't show up that day. That would be a world where he wouldn't have respawned because people wouldn't know what he did. People wouldn't know that was the person who made those massive changes. It wasn't the creative lead, it wasn't the force for good. Say if he never even got hired at Modern Warfare 2 because he was left out of the Medal of Honor credits even. That would be a world where we don't get respawn. And this is where you have to talk about like the Pareto principle of 80-20 and it's like 20. Is that how it works when it gets in terms of like applying and getting hired is they go to the game and look at its credits? Or is it a case where you claim it and then they need to verify? Like, I'm not sure how it works, so I'm not sure. 80% of people can have 80% of the results. If those people are left out of credits, if people like, say, Hideki Kamiya or people like Yoko Taro never get credited with their work, you never see the explosion of what they can do as, I guess, as examples for people. You never get to see a world where Respawn have decided to, you know, release genuinely fantastic games and have one of the biggest, like, battle royals in the world. That is also not just a big battle royale, but also an exceptional game. If you get credited, you'll be able to go forward. You'll be able to make better games. An example, I think, is like if you look at Skull and Bones, right? How many people have left that project because it's taken so long? Are they not going to get credit? Is that the end of their career? How many potential auteurs, how many potential extremely good developers are being left behind? Especially now when it looks like VC funding has made tons and tons of all of these, like, I guess, incredible studios and video games happen. Because there's Aaron Flynn, who's former Bioware general manager for Inflection Games on Nightingale. Sam Barlow, who was a lead designer on Silent Hill Origins and Revelations, now has her story released and Immortality, an entirely new product. Ikumi Nakamura, the creative director on Ghostwire Tokyo, now has her own independent studio. Whatever made that happen, was able to talk about that game on E3, was able to be credited with that work and then able to be noticed and move on. And that's the thing that video games aren't letting happen very much today. So ultimately, the reason this should matter to you, and this is something you should maybe think about when it comes to, I guess, is there watching... Is there a reason why? Like, that's what I'm really curious on. If they're doing it, is it uh, other than incompetence and laziness? Like, is it because... The credits are too long if you include every single person. Like, I, I'm not sure. The credits in the video games, see, trying to follow creatives in the industry and see how much this is important is when people who make games have their work diminished, 
they're not likely to get better at that career. They're not likely to continue. They're not going to get their degree. They're not going to stay in the same industry. They might move on to a different industry. They might go somewhere where they don't need a credit to get a job. When, let's say, if you go from EA to, I don't know why you go to Ubisoft, but you're going to Ubisoft. And maybe you're this incredible dev. You have to say, oh yeah, trust me, I worked in EA. And they're like, well, show us your work. I was, I worked on that game. You're not in the credits. We Googled you, we couldn't find anything. And then you go to show them your work and it's all under NDA because it's code from a game or it's artistic work from a game that you don't have a license to. That, is that how it works? They Google you? Like, I feel like that's not how this works. I, if it is, like, that's insane. Joke. And then instead of having Vincent Pellas, instead of having Kojima's, instead of having Shigeru Miyamoto's, you just have to continually replace staff with, instead of these people, you get effectively the revolving door of interns, which is a lot of why I think people are theorizing a lot of why video games have so many more issues and so much less general creativity is that it's studios are throwing bodies against the wall. They're using World War I tactics instead of the tactics of modern war, where instead of highly effective people doing highly effective things, you have a load of people who, by all means, have the potential to be fantastic, but aren't given the time to train, aren't given the skills, aren't given the room to grow. They're just torn through like paper. And I think the strongest example of this, and this is why we're thinking about this, right? It's Striking Distance Studios, Callisto Protocol. There was this prevailing idea of chaotic development environments and a rapidly scaled up studio that went from VC money from a couple people to a lot in no period of time and that's why the game was a bit eh. why the crunch obviously resulted in the pc launch issues being so bad and why the publisher was expecting five million sales and got like two million which is pretty impressive but nowhere near what they actually expected and thanks to games industries brandon sinclair there were five developers who weren't in the credits that they spoke to and the total was about 20 people there was no policy of crediting allowed whatsoever the senior developers leads and directors were left out so this isn't just interns this is people who should what? by all means be credited oh and then move God. on to lead something else and so have another chance at making a crazy. great video game. These employees who worked for over a year in this game, it's had a significant part of it, weren't credited because management basically decided that when they left, they were betraying the company. That's more or less what it is. It's said that the source petty. described the management circle as vindictive. They were playing favorites yeah. with who got credited. If you stuck it to the end, if you saw the whole way through, you got the credit. If you left, even if you left on reasonably good terms, you didn't get the credit. One source said they had a great time working there and had a great relationship with everyone on the team, including the C-suite, including Glenn, the leader. But no, just great job, but they betrayed them at the end. And that's where I think the video games industry is another example of being tremendously short-sighted. Because the example I wanted to talk about was Splatoon. Bear with me, bear with me genuinely. The team at Nintendo EAD and EPD who make Splatoon, right? They are said to, and I don't know how much truth there is to this, but you can feel it. It's said to be Splatoon was the first, pro the first uh, project that basically Miyamoto's interns, the generation that he trained working through different Mario games, through the like Sunshine and Galaxy and stuff, and uh, I guess Odyssey, those new staff that he trained, they were able to make what is now, especially as of Splatoon 3, the second highest selling game in Japan after yeah, Pokemon and you can feel when you play those games the first one got a little bit messy and kind of got better over time but you can see that's the power of one team that's the part of one team being trained being skilled up being able to develop every single step of the way playing through the single player campaigns playing through how the multiplayer is handled how it's balanced you can feel excellence you can feel like joy you can feel the, the Mario DNA in a lot of it because they kind of aim for the same vibes. But you can feel that those are people who stuck to it. They were credited fully. They were even given, like, I think they all illustrated their own names and credits, at least the Japanese side in Splatoon 2. To me, it was them looking to the future. And I think that would be an interesting this, uh, thing to, like, look into is, like, them being credited. Like, I can understand the studio being, like, obviously, I think people would know about the studio over the actual individual developers. but. I think it'd be interesting if, like, someone who actually is way more uh, knowledgeable of the industry. I'm not saying they're not, but let's be fair. They're they're not even close to, like, uh, actual reporters and stuff like that. Um, finding out, like, what, how much of an impact not being put in credits can make on your career as a developer. I think that would be something that, um, who is that dude who always gets uh, articles pumped out? I forget his name, but anyways, like an actual um, reporter for games, like who has access to the developers, uh, especially anonymously, so they can maybe see. Like, is this really a really big, a legitimate big issue? I think it is messed up. Don't get me wrong. Like, it shouldn't be the case. But I don't know if it's like as damaging as they're seeming to imply where, look, these developers are making this solid game and it's because they're being credited. 
Is that is that why? I'm trying to, or is it because they're been working on that same game, so they're not having to jump between different games? They could focus all their efforts into making this game great through you know Splatoon one, two, and three. Build up the new wave of talent. Trying to build up the people who would make the games of the future, and that's resulted in a. It's obviously the West doesn't care about it too much, but Splatoon three is a cultural powerhouse in Japan. And obviously, if you look at the origin of video games, that's where I guess a lot of the strongest video games in the West came from too. It was these incredible bursts of million sellers in Japan that just knew how to do game design right because they were taught properly. And that's what the AAA industry and that's what a lot of this like creditation stuff is going wrong. It doesn't actually think about the future of video games. It doesn't think about what we'll be playing yeah. in 10 years. It thinks about what we'll be spending money on in the next week. I guess in this, this fiscal year. It's funny that we kind of came to this thinking about credits, but it's about the people who make games getting better and being able to stick through it. Splatoon 3 is a perfect example of that, but there's so many others. The Zampella example is perfect. Imagine a world without Vince Zampella. Imagine a world where Konami didn't credit Kojima. Not even Metal Gear Solid. With Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2. And then he never got to make Police Knots or Metal Gear Solid. And then ultimately never got to make Death Stranding. I'm not even the biggest fan of Death Stranding's like whole it's a new genre, but we'd be worse off without it. And with the way in the industry is going and things like this, we will be concerned. We would be worse off without it. I actually don't agree with that. Um, I don't think we were worse or better with it. I think it was an okay attempt at trying a new genre. Um, but I personally don't think Death Stranding did anything for the gaming industry. Maybe it did. Maybe I'm missing the point. I just don't see it. Because it's just basically a walking simulator. And ico and stuff like that kind of already did it in a sense so consider you worse off without it so hopefully next time you get to voice your opinion on this you'll know that i think people deserve credit because that's how they get another job that's how they get better and that's how video games actually become god i don't think that's how they get better but it definitely would help them get another job damn good again instead of whatever the hell they are now i'm mostly saying that because i recently saw it in and even then i don't know if it does help them get another job is that really how you go about hiring uh developers is they don't have like they can't reach out to the you know the studio like hey we have this person uh, applying similar to like current jobs you know what i mean like it's not like your current job has like a credit screen or anything like that uh usually the employer would just do a quick reach out if they can't if they don't believe you like hey this person's applying um did they work for you and you know Obviously, there's just going to be records of it, so they're just like, yeah. So I don't know if it's similar, why it's so different, why credits are this big thing on where you are going to get your new job from. You know what I mean? Like, that seems really weird that it's like, I don't know. It just seems weird, man. Image on Twitter of a collection of AAA games and the equipment and gear screens. <sighs> we went wrong summer. And I think by having individuals who have credits, the ability to keep going and make better and better games. I think that so what's the argument for those who do get credit, but they still are releasing shit games? I don't think you covered that. And it's something to be thought of. Like, you can't just look at it from one angle and one angle only. That's the only way we'll skip that. Not to be all doom and gloom. It's actually pretty good. There are some fantastic video games. It's just, you'll know where they're coming from. They're coming from people with experience. That's it for today. This is Not always. Uh, sometimes, like, indie developers are a great example. So, uh, yeah, I would... I both agree with him. And, I mean, I agree in the sense that it should be on there. I have no... Like, it's petty and childish to remove people from the credits just because they didn't stick with the whole thing. I think anyone who worked on it more than, I would say, three months... Um, should be in the credits or if you're a contractor and you're specifically contracted for a specific thing then sure you should be in the credits as well i don't think it's that big of a deal but um just because it's like what if you got a contractor to just do like skins like do they need to make a whole new skins thing just for this person maybe i don't see why not no one even looks at the freaking credits or at least i don't as a gamer like i always skip them if i can i don't really care to be honest and names of uh, people don't really get me excited most of the time. Kojima a little bit, though not really after Death Stranding. 
Um, yeah. I mean, at the same time, like, even Yoshi P, like, I'm not going to assume because Yoshi P is working on a new Final Fantasy, it's going to be an absolute, you know, God tier game because Final Fantasy 14 isn't perfect. He did make mistakes. I'm not saying uh, he didn't do an amazing job. He did a miracle, basically. Um, so, like, it's not saying that. What I'm saying, though, is that it, he's not perfect. I'm not going to assume the next game is going to come out is going to be perfect. It could be a dud. He doesn't have a long enough track record to know if he will release a good single player game that's just how it is i'm going to get the game because it looks amazing but like yoshi p whether it's yoshi p or it was someone else i would probably still be getting the game that's the thing yoshi p does make it a little easier to like justify pre-ordering it that's about it um yeah no i've never been one to like Put it all on like a single name uh, a studio maybe to a degree like maybe because i got burned by bungie with destiny that i don't even trust studios now so 